Hi again, I'm Carson from Guys With Games, and today's game I call Snake in the Box. Um, it's suitable for little children, younger kids will enjoy this more. Um, the level of English is really not as important as the maturity level. I think an older student might not have as much fun playing this game, but here's how it works. I draw a grid on the whiteboard, and it can be however big you want it to be. It could be six, seven, eight by eight, but I like to use five by five. I find that typically it's enough to let everybody at least try one time and still have fun playing the game. How the game works is I have also drawn this in my teacher's manual or on a piece of paper so that I have a reference for the actual answer. And I need to explain to the kids that inside this box there's a big snake. And as you reveal one tile, I will show you that piece of the snake but the object of the game is to find the tail and the head. So each would be worth one point or one star or whatever. However you um, reward your kids uh, in the class for doing something well, they win the game by finding this one and this one. So how it works is maybe I'll have the kids practice asking each other questions in a QA format. I'll have the class divided into two teams. So this team and that team. One student on each team stand up and uh, you can choose who goes first either way but I usually use paper, scissors, stone and the winner asks the loser one of the questions that they've learned recently. Where do you live? And they answer, I live in Taoyuan. Great. Then the winner can choose first. So they choose one and you choose by saying the letter and the number first. If they need practice about how to say what they want then we practice that. This is D1. What is this one? It's B3. Okay. How about this? And ask the kids. And they say D5. Great. Now they understand. Where do you want to see? And they, maybe Johnny. Johnny says B3. Okay. What does B3 look like? I look at my, and it looks like this. So this is the piece of snake that you can see. It's not the tail and it's not the head. It's just part of the body. <coughs> And as they start to reveal parts of the body, they have a more accurate idea of maybe what this snake is going to end up looking like. So you'll end up with something that looks like this. I'll stop and fast forward and I'll fill in most of it so that you get the idea. Okay, so let's say we've advanced the game and the kids have guessed all of these different places. Each time, paper, scissors, stone, the winner asks the loser a question, the winner gets to reveal one first, then the loser goes second. If they're smart enough to think about it, they will start to understand that these all connect. So this logically needs to fill in this gap. They wouldn't really need to see this to know, but they maybe are still young enough where they can't make that connection yet, and they'll still ask. But if you look at this, this must connect here, which means that there's no real way for this to go because these also need to connect. So this would either be the tail or the head. But if they were smart to figure that out and they said B4, then congratulations, you found the tail and you get a star. And go on until they find the head and then the other team possibly could have one. It's nice and fun and it's fair and it's a good way to get two students interacting with each other, not so much them with the teacher every time. And that's it. So that's how you play Snake in a Box. Thanks a lot.